Welcome back to another episode of DIY Golf Cart Garage. Today's episode is going to be a continuation of our 2003 EasyGo TXT, or what's better known around here as Pawpaw's Tree Climber. Today we'll be installing the traction control system. What we'll end up doing is causing the back tires to actually become limited slip. One slips, the other picks up, gives us a lot better traction going up, down hills, through anything that we need and actually more pulling power. So what we're going to do first, we've got all of our tools, well, 90% of our tools out. I've got our oil that we're putting back into our trans transaxle, roughly about an 85 weight. Brake cleaner or carb cleaner, either one to clean out the transaxle once we get it open and to make sure that we remove the gasket material. Rubber gloves, you will want these. That transaxle fluid stinks to high heaven. Once it gets on your skin, it's gonna be there for days. And we've got a couple of tools that we'll be using to make sure we get the gasket material off. First thing we're gonna to do to our golf car here is we're gonna jack it up, put jack stands under it, and get these back tires off so that we can get the brake cables off. Let's get started. Okay, we've got the tires off on both sides with it jacked up in the air. Next, what we've got to do is lock down the brake on the third notch. To secure this uh, drum assembly, we'll take the cotter pin out, take the nut off, and then go to the other side and do the very same thing. Once we get that done, we'll come on the back side, take that cotter pin out of the uh, pin that holds the brake cable to the back of the backing plate. We'll go ahead and pull that out and then next we're going to open up the pumpkin. Let's get started because this is not going to be fun. Okay, I've got the brake drum off and as you can tell after I cleaned everything, the brake shoes have actually come apart. So before we put this all the way back together, this thing's going to get a brake job. Now what we've got to do in order to get inside that pumpkin is to take a snap ring off here so that we can actually pull this axle out. So we'll grab our snap ring pliers, reach in, pull that loose. Now when you get this snap ring off, all you have to do is just pull and the complete axle will slide out. Now once this is done, you'll go to the other side, do the very same thing, and then we're going to open it up. Now that we got both axles out, we're going to get started here on the pumpkin. First thing we want to do is go ahead and remove the first nut right here in the center of the drain plug. Now I've got my 15 16 socket. We'll go ahead, take it loose, and let everything drain out. Once all the fluid drains out, I'll start taking the outer bolts out. It will get this pumpkin cover off, get it cleaned up, and then we'll pull the gears. Once you've taken out all the bolts, I'll go all the way around, this cover should come off. It may take a little bit of prying with a little prying tool, but it will pop off. Be sure if you have to use a pry tool, do not deform this edge, otherwise you have to straighten it back out and later on if you don't you'll have a leak. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and drop this, spread a little cleaner on these bolts that we're fixing to have to take out, which are two on each side here. Then we'll take those out, bring the chunk down, clean that up, and then get to changing some of the gearing inside here to make this thing limited slip. Now that I've got the gearing actually pulled out of the golf car, we're going to do a little bit of pre-assembly. We have these plates here that actually mount together, but we have these little friction rings that has to be pressed into the indented area. 
Now, in doing this, you will need a vise or a press. Do not, by any means, use a hammer. It will not work. You will break this friction ring. And we've seen enough of it to where that is not covered under warranty because if you put it in a press, it will not break. Now, trying to get it to line up is going to be a little hard. So what i got a little trick here is a little bit of masking tape. Take some masking tape. Center this up. Put it over the ring. And then we'll put it in the press. I want to make sure I get it evenly pressed. Do not over tighten it. We just want it to get in there and be seated like that. Now it's in there good. Now we got to install one spring inside of the other. Sandwich this between this. Now we're going to put the whole thing inside the press because we've got to close it enough to get these two pins in these two holes. Oh, we've now got the pins in. And needs to say that was a chore there because these blocks have to be very, very close and very tight. Now what we'll do is take these nuts off and take this ring gear off. We'll take a 9 16 socket and ratchet. Okay, we've got that apart. Now we'll clean this up a little bit and get ready to punch out this little spring pin because the center pin has got to come out next. Now that we've got these gears separated, there's a small spring pin right side here that actually goes through this pin in the center and over here. So what we want to do is come on the back side here with a punch and punch it out towards the front. Got the pin out, but I had to use the assistance of a small Phillips head screwdriver in order to push it all the way out. So now that that's out, I pull this and the pin itself will slide easily. Now, one thing to keep in mind, as you're sliding this pin out, there's gears and thrust washers inside here. You want to keep all of those intact in place. So you'll just have to hold them into place while you're tapping it out. Now that it's tapped out, we'll get our new locking piece and slide right down the center. Making sure that the pins that are locking in place are towards the outside and that the holes are towards the inside so that we can slide it right in and then tap the pin right back through. Once we've got it about started so that we know that it is aligned, we will actually at this time go ahead and pry these locking pins out. Now, 
tap the pin back in. Make sure everything is centered up good. And we can put our locking spring pin back into place. Now we just go by putting everything right back together. We'll set this portion down, line the holes up, and bolts go from the bottom up. We'll just get this reassembled. It's time to get everything cleaned up and back in the car. Remember, do not tighten all these down till you get them all done. Now that we've got the gears actually installed in the car, it's time to put the inspection plate back on. I have some gear oil, some RTV gasket maker. I'm gonna go ahead and run a bead all the way around the inner edge. Then I'm gonna come back and loop around each hole. That way we'll get a good proper seal. And then I'll go over there, put it on the car, tighten it up finger tight, wait one hour to let everything seal and cure and then we'll tighten it the rest of the way. Okay, I've got the differential plate back on. Got it snugged up. It's been an hour. Went back, retightened all the bolts until we got us a good seal. Next, I'm going to put the axle in. Get all this buttoned up here. Once everything's done, tight, I'll go back to the underneath. I got some uh, 85 weight gear oil. I'm going to put a bunch inside there. Seal it up. Put my tires on. We'll be ready to run. Now, when it comes to putting your axles back in, all you want to do is make sure that your splines are clean. They will slide in very easily. You'll feel it get all the way to the back. You'll just rotate it and press in. It actually goes in that smooth. Next we'll get our snap ring. Okay, got the snap ring in. Next we'll put the drum on. Our washers, the castle nut. 
Now we'll torque to this bad boy down. Make sure we get our cotter pin in. Then once we've got this done, we put oil in the diff gear and we're done. Now when it comes to doing that, you've got the cap that fits on the end of it. Well, actually the drain plug. You'll take the gear loop, just spray it inside there, and when it starts running back out, you just put the little cap nut on, tighten it up, that's it. It doesn't take a whole lot. That'll only be baby half a pint to a pint worth in there. It really doesn't need a lot because the gear's all slinging around and it's really an enclosed area. And that will be it. If you have any more comments, suge suggestions, like us, leave the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you later on another episode of DIY Golf Cart Garage.